as we promised you, we have the author of Am I Not a Man? The Dred Scott Story, Mark Shirtleff, and he is also the Utah Attorney General. He's going to be speaking uh, to us, and also in the studio with us is Mike Webb. He is the publisher of Am I Not a Man? And it's Sortis Publishing Company. Yes. Uh, Mike, welcome. Thank you for being with us. And we thank also you. thank Mark uh, for being with us and talking to us. Uh, the, uh, how did this come about? about Mark approached you, Mike? Uh, it was actually an introduction through a mutual friend who knew that he had written the book and uh, knew that I was a publisher and we got introduced that way. Okay, and a little bit about Sortis Publishing. Uh, we are a small publisher for the time being. Uh, we're we're uh, in Gilbert, Arizona. That's where my home is. And uh, we have grown quite a bit over the last couple of years mm -hmm. and continue to do so and especially with authors like uh, Mark Shirtliff coming our way that uh, that certainly helps our uh, exposure. Uh, uh, Mark, as you, um Mark, as you know, uh, we have the publisher uh, of Am I Not a Man in the studio with us. And Mark, give us a little bit of background why this story drew your attention to this degree. Well, thank you, Tanya. You know, I, first of all, I was drawn to Mike because uh, of the high-tech uh, application he puts to uh, publishing. Uh, I think just this, talking to you today through this video phone in my home, I think, is one of those examples, and we're very excited about spreading this message on a national stage. See, the, uh, well, probably about eight years ago, Tanya, I was Attorney General. I've had a great love of history, uh, particularly of famous cases, and uh, it just, I remembered the Dred Scott case from law school. Uh, where we mostly learned about uh, what its significance was as far as the power of the Supreme Court vis-a-vis -vis the Congress. Mm -hmm. And yet it just struck me, it struck me hard one day, well, but who was the man Dred Scott? Mm. Uh, why don't we know anything about this man? And it, it struck me so hard I decided to, uh, to travel the country the next several years and study and, and get everything I could about him and, and found an amazing story of courage and perseverance. Yeah, Mark, I would, um, I would dare to say that most people probably haven't heard this story. Um, why is it important for America to know this story? Well, it's important, I think, because of, particularly today, you know, we, we find ourselves in a position where nationally things are really pulling apart. We're really not pulling together. I think there was a show of that on the State of the State address to try and sit together, but it's going to take so much more than that. There's so many allegations of racism and, and uh, the fighting that's going on. I think it's a time when our country needs to pull together. And this story is really about uh, not just a man who was a slave who wanted to be free and wouldn't stop fighting for that, but he had to have the support of a white family to get him through it. Mm. And this white family that he grew up with that later uh, was able to help him out through 12 years of court against some of the strongest anti-slavery uh, families, or pro-slavery families in the country, kind of shows how important it is to pull together in these difficult times. You know, Mark, uh, we're speaking, of course, uh, mid-1800s, which was the 19th century, and unfortunately, can you say we have evolved much past what was going on there? I think the complexion has only changed somewhat. I think you're right. You know, we have obviously come a long way because we ended slavery and then it took another hundred years and the civil rights movement to get some freedoms. But, but today we're still divided by, by race, by class distinction, socioeconomic status. We've got all this conflict over, the, 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 uh, over immigration where we see a lot of still racism and intolerance coming out. Uh, you know, what's extraordinary is this is the 150th anniversary of the swearing in of Abraham Lincoln. And we know that Abraham Lincoln was elected president because of the Dred Scott case. And yet we don't know much about the man who, uh, who fought for his freedom for his family and the people that helped him. Uh, that is a great example that uh, propelled Lincoln to the presidency and tells us today that we still can't pull together in this country. And Mike, what, what issues, can you just share a couple of issues that Dred Scott faced that maybe we aren't facing today? Well, uh, obviously the fact that he could not uh, take care of his family, the fear that he couldn't provide for them. Now, we don't have slavery today. Uh, well, we do in some places of the world, clearly, but most people don't face that. But we all know the struggle and hardship of not uh, wondering where we're going to be able to fit, feed our kids, those people who are out of work, those people who feel at a, a disadvantage in the courts or uh, financially because they can't take care of things. I mean, this, this is an example of where we do have to pull together. You know, what's interesting right now, there's all this talk from members of my own party, sadly, about repealing or changing the 14th Amendment mm. uh, dealing with uh, in this country. But it was Abraham Lincoln and it was the Republicans who passed that law to overturn Dred Scott. 
and we just can't go back to that same period of time when people were treated so differently. Uh, and, and we ought to stay with uh, the rules about who are citizens of this country and the benefits of living here. You know, Mark, I think the most devastating part among many things in the book and the story is that he was freed once and then returned to slavery. Extraordinary. It was almost, almost too cruel because he, uh, he did fight for his freedom in the courts. Uh, ultimately, the law in Missouri at the time was once free, always free. So uh, a, a jury that was actually made up of slave owners uh, had to rule him free. And yet, because of the times and heading toward the Civil War, the Supreme Court in Missouri was changed and to a pro-slavery. They actually ran on pro-slavery platforms, and when they became judges, they overturned the case and, yes, ripped him back into slavery uh, after having tasted what it was to be a man, to be free, not have to worry about his children and his wife being ripped away from him. So I think everybody can relate to that. Am I not a man? I mean, put, put yourself in a position uh, as a man or a parent and not have the control or ability to protect your what you would do for that and how hard you were fighting. That's the kind of courageous hero that Dred Scott is that we want the world to know about. Uh, Mike? Yes. Um, words to Mark? Well, uh, Mark, I appreciate the story. I think it is one that, uh, that uh, the country needs to uh, get more familiar with, and I'm honored to be the publisher to be able to put that out. It is available um, online um, directly at our website, sortispublishing.com. We hope to get the message out to many. Mark, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Indeed. Indeed. You bet, neighbor. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Um, Mike, this is a poignant story. This carries a lot of weight. Yes. yes. Uh, is it being received well? What are you, what are you sensing from this? <clears throat> well, uh, February is Black History Month, mm -hmm. and um, we are doing our best to, to get the word out about the book. Uh, it's a perfect time for people to brush up on their um, American history, and um, it, it, uh, it's been accepted by Barnes & Noble. It'll be in their stores. And uh, it's just a message that many need to hear. Mike, stay right there when we come back. More about Sordis Publishing, okay? We'll be right back after a short. Uh, Mike Webb uh, with us, uh, Sortis Publishing. Mike, um, great, great book. Is this what, d did that draw you, this story drew you to saying, yes, I want to publish this? Yes, absolutely. Um, that and the, and the author in particular, Mark Shortliff, he's, um, from the business standpoint, he's a higher profile author and that's always good for business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're in the business to, to be in business and exactly. earn a living. What other, uh, you sh how many other books have you published? Uh, we have done about a dozen other books, okay. and those are uh, kids' books, uh, novels, some business books. We have uh, many more on the way. Uh, we've got a very interesting one coming up. It's a 50-book chil uh, series, children's books, about a little girl that's all-American. You know what, that, uh, that's where I was going with the next question, talking about the genres you will cover and publish. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's a wide variety. Yeah, we'll look at anything. Um, well. As, as, not anything, and I was going to specify. <laughs> no, I, yeah. yeah, anything that's clean and family-oriented, right, right. and you know, there's there's not some published law, not immoral. Right, there's some companies out there that'll go there. Yeah. We won't. Did you do anything else before you became a publisher? Yeah, um, I've been in sales and marketing in different venues for the last 21 years, I think. And, and so, uh, why did you want to get into publishing? Well, it's an interesting story. I was at a McDonald's with a friend of mine who had published two books and uh, had just done his third, but his publisher at the time wasn't going to do uh, uh, business books any longer. Mm -hmm. So he said he needed a publisher, and I said, why don't I do it? And that's what started this whole thing. If you were watching the show earlier, you realize that we did uh, talk to the author of Am I Not a Man, the Dred Scott story. Mark Shirtliff uh, was speaking to us, and the passion he feels for this topic mm -hmm. was so apparent. Yes. Yeah, um, he's told me that ever since law school, when he first studied this case, he's been extremely interested in it. It is Scott. the pivotal case. It is. It is. Uh, uh, um, Scott versus uh, Sanford. Mm -hmm. um, huge case in American history. And with his interest in law, obviously, he's uh, 
One, one now, writer. I understand it is uh, obviously uh, ba based on history. It's called fictional history. Mm -hmm. uh, you have taken a little license with uh, expounding on the stories. Right. What, what Mark did, he's traveled to all the places that are mentioned in the book, and he, he found Dred Scott's great-granddaughter, and uh, she had all the family history and mm -hmm. specific mm -hmm. uh, happenings during, throughout that whole story, and uh, he took note of those. So it is a true story with uh, some fiction intertwined simply to, to make the story Readable. Obviously. We didn't get a chance to ask Mark. I wanted to ask Mark what type of man Dred Scott was. In other words, his personality. So uh, obviously, our audience and yours truly will have to read the book to find out really what what kind of man can take have this kind of perseverance to to get to the end of the yeah to absolutely get to the end of the story. very uh, not a large man, uh, but five feet but, I think yeah I yeah, saw, yeah. Mm -hmm. small man and he but a lot of fight. Yes. A lot of fight in him, and he was able. He wasn't able. He, he didn't live long enough to see it overturned. Um, I don't believe he was alive when Lincoln got into office. But as Mark stated, it's this is a pivotal story that enabled Abraham Lincoln to win his mm -hmm. presidential yeah. seat, which overturned yeah. slavery. His platform. Yes. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. Thank and how can people find Sortis Publishing? Well, we're on the web. Thank you. We are on the web at sortispublishing.com. That's S-O-R-T-I-S. -S. And uh, all of our contact information is available there in the book as well. Thanks, thank you Mike. for being here. Thank you. And thank Mark again for speaking mm -hmm. with us also. Yes. When we come back, it's Prescott Area Leadership. You stay right there.